actually dissolved. Oh my goodness. Welcome back to Berkeley Local. I'm your host, Chris Weagle at CMN TV. And today, joining me here in the Solo Studio Pro is Tim Murad of Tim Murad Realty. Yep. Who's also with KW Metro. Correct. Is it real estate or? Uh, yes, yeah. real estate. Yeah, I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> but most importantly, you're the board president of the Berkeley Chamber of Commerce. Correct. Welcome. Yeah, yeah thank you. Good cool. to be here. The last time you were at CMN was uh, in the fall, October, for what was the event? State of the City Address. State of the City Address. <clears throat> yeah. Normally an in-person thing, but last two years we've had to do it virtually. And this was my first year as chamber president to be the host. So how was that experience? It was awesome. <laughs> okay, that's It was good. awesome. I had fun with it. It was, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was good, you know, because the last two years have been rough. Right. You, know? you don't see a lot of people. So right. it was nice to see, you know, some of the people involved and to see some of the business people getting awarded. And uh, it, it was the first chance I got to talk to the new superintendent to the Berkeley schools. Right. So, uh, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I had fun with it. Hopefully we can go back to in-person this year, but we'll see. And that's an event traditionally thrown in the fall? Or? In the fall, okay. yeah, in the fall. And uh, just kind of, you know, the the uh, city managers and mayors of Berkeley and Huntington Woods kind of give us a state of their cities because that's kind of primarily where the Berkeley Chamber is located. And, uh, and, and we recognize a citizen of the year and a business of the year, a business owner of the year. So yeah, it's it's you know it's it's. Uh, How are those awards chosen through the chamber? What's the process? Uh, we have a committee that kind of narrows down to a few people, and then we put it out for a vote. So okay, yeah. And do you think that uh, again, come October, you'll be hosting again, or do you not know yet? Or oh yeah, I'll be host as chamber president. president. It's one of my duties. Very yeah, good. so very good. Yeah, so I'll be hosting it again. That one, if it's if it's live, it'll be different. You sure. Know? Because okay. it was nice here, you know, I had a teleprompter and I could, you know, and I still haven't gone back and watched the recording of it. But I it looked do very that. good. I've watched it, it several okay. times. All right, good. Uh, I know in the past we covered it also when it was at Farina's, which right. was the in-person. Right, yeah, so room. that's that's going to be our challenge because Farina's is now gone. Right, so it's like all new. All new, so, I, so we have to find a location for it, you know, that's big enough to hold a certain number of people. I think we're, it's in the works. We've got it in the works and so... Very good. Yeah. Well, uh, before we, because we're talking about now about your role at the chamber, but Correct. before we get started, we we're talking about what kind of the road that led you to the Correct. chamber. Why don't we tell the audience, like, how did you wind up at the chamber? What, so, it, it's I can make, do a, I'll try, I'll try to do a condensed version, okay. but uh, you know, '86, I moved to Berkeley. Uh, one of the things I immediately liked about Berkeley, I I grew up on the northwest side of Detroit, and it reminded me of where I grew up yet it was the suburbs, you know, and it didn't feel like the suburbs, and it was easy to get to everywhere because they're just finishing up 696, and once that opened, it was like, you could go everywhere. And uh, so then started a family, kids got in school, got involved in PTAs, and through PTA, uh, I, I, uh, a friend that I knew through the schools, through my kids, uh, encouraged me to uh, apply for a position on the the Berkeley Library Renovation Committee. They were putting together a committee, and I was selected by the, I think it was the board, the, the, the library board. And then, of course, the committee met, and it was met with, you know, there's some citizens, some board members, library director, and I think there was uh, somebody from city council on it. I, I don't remember all the people anymore. And they voted me chair. So, so what just, was the goal of that committee? What was your Just aim? to oversee... The, the, the renovation and construction, you know, we gutted the library. The library temporarily moved to Oak Park on 11 Mile. That was the only bit facility we could find to run a temporary library. And we made decisions on design decisions and stuff like that. So, and just, you know, kind of monitor the progress and the budget and all that kind of stuff. So, and the library that exists and is in use today. Exists today, yeah. It was much smaller. The whole back, like the like where you walk in at the doors, all that and back is, is new. And and actually they gutted the whole building. They took out the windows, everything. It went back to just brick and steel, basically wow, in the thing. roof. And it was all redone, yeah. So it was, you know, it was a fun experience and I wanted to stay involved. And uh, somebody approached me about 
being on the DDA board because the DDA board was made up of business owners, but also there's some spots in there for residents. Right. So I did that for a number of years, and then uh, uh, <clears throat> I think as as a member of the board, I was kind of the liaison to the planning commission. So I'd go to the planning commission meetings, and uh, a longtime Berkeley resident, Neil Jordan, uh, passed away. He was on the planning commission, and I backfilled his spot and sat on that position for 14 years. 14 years. So, yeah, and I stayed in, you know, as my kids grow through school. I think I got involved at one point with the athletic boosters at the high school in my last few years with my kids there. Can you just so, give me a, a short description? Because I'm sure a lot of citizens have heard of a planning commission, but they're not really sure. Like, what does it do in regard in relation to the city council, so, to people? Yeah, so uh, it's, an, it's a volunteer position. There's no pay. Uh, and what we do did as a planning commissioner, you uh, uh, any any business related construction comes before can come before the planning commission depending on the extents of it. So, for example, <clears throat> we were talking about Farinas earlier. Yeah, there's a new building being built there that would have come before the planning commission, and we're reviewing, you know, making sure. It, follows all the ordinances, meets all the building codes, and in some sense, aesthetically pleasing to the to the residents, so, you know, to the community. We're, you know, all of what I've done, even now as a chamber member and president, I've always believed in making Berkeley a better place. Not that it's not great, but, you know, and I consider it one of the best places to live in Metro Detroit. So if not the, I'd say the best place to live in Metro Detroit. Once somebody gets their their plans approved at the Planning Commission, does it then, do you, does the Planning Commission make a recommendation to City Council or what's the... In some instances they do. If it's like a special use, like for example, a special use would be potentially a drive-through. If a okay. business needed a drive-through, drive -through, that could be a special use. That would then go to the City Council. Uh, but then when, when it, something is fully approved, then it goes to the building department. And we don't look at, like, the actual... Uh, it goes through then an engineering review. Okay. The city has a, a contract with an engineering company that then reviews all the documents to make sure that, you know, the engineering and, and structure and all that are going to be they built sound. properly yeah. yeah sound so like you know one of the things that's great about a new development like the one at farinas is that because they're putting in a new parking lot uh, and this is something we did back in the late 90s for the library is there's stormwater retention underneath those parking lots so you know we've had issues with floods in berkeley over the right. years this is one way that hopefully we're alleviating it as there's new developments going in so so those, you know, some of the things. It, it was interesting. It was fun. It was tough at times, you know, when some controversial uh, uh, proposals came up. And but uh, it, it was, you know, uh, I don't regret any of my time doing it. So. And uh, what's the relationship between the planning and and DDA, or is there is there an overlap? Or no, there's really no overlap. So DDA is a uh, a district, which is basically. Coolidge from 11 to 12 mile and then 12 mile from Coolidge to Greenfield and it's kind of a, a special tax district you know the, the DDA when it was created captures the appreciation of taxes and those that's the best way to explain it and they develop projects to help improve the, the those that district the downtown so they they could be they were times where they bought, brought proposals in front of the planning commission to, to do improvements. And so, are there certain special requirements if you're in the DDA zone versus outside of it for what can be built or cannot be no, built? Or, no, no okay. not really. Not really. I mean, there is different zoning. We have different zoning districts in Berkeley, and that's what sets sets that. Okay. So, yeah. And what? When was your last year uh, with the planning commission? Do you remember? I'm gonna say it was. I think it was 2020. Okay. Yeah. That, the disappointing thing for me was, you know, my last meetings were all virtual. Right. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and I extended, I should have been done the end of June. 
but because of the pandemic and they wanted more time to find replacements. So I think I stayed through August or September. I don't remember now. And were you, uh, you were involved with the chamber yes. near the end of your planning commission? Yeah, term? so so at some point while I was on, we had different liaisons for like city council, mm -hmm. DDA, uh, Parks and Rec, yeah. you know. So I was the liaison to the chamber and ultimately ended up on the board. So, and then as president. So how does the chamber interact with planning and DDA and the rest of the city? Well, we're not, chamber doesn't really do any sort of new construction because, okay. you know, we, we, we're a charity. That's how we run our chamber and we raise money to give back to the community. That's primarily what we do. So like we run things like the Art Bash, the Street Art Festival. Uh, last last fall, we did a restaurant uh, weekend. Right. Uh, and, and we do partner on things with the DDA, but from a chamber standpoint, no, we don't really do anything. And when I was a liaison from the chamber to the, or from the planning commission to the chamber, I was there more to report on what kind of new construction or new projects might be coming to the downtown or to the businesses. So uh, what have you, what is, what's been the biggest challenge since you went, uh, I guess, to, uh, you left the planning commission, went to the chamber, I, obviously it's the pandemic. So, so well, the pandemic, the two, two yeah, years. Because, yeah, because I took over as chamber president in January of 2020. Right. That was my first year. So, or what, no. Let me back. No, it was 2021. So we were a the year into it. it. So yeah. the biggest challenge, you know, like we couldn't do like the Art Bash, the street art festivals, and we couldn't raise money. Thankfully, Oakland County came through with some grants and we were able to get those grants. And that, that kept us alive for that year. And, uh, <clears throat> and initially it was going to be that you had to pay it back, but ultimately we haven't had to pay them back. They waived that. So that's that's kept us afloat and uh and you know last year we did do both the art bash and the street art festival and they were not as successful as previous years but what's trending towards this year is that it looks like we're going to be you know just as big if not better and one of the things we did for both of those events last year was we spread them out a little bit further okay. so that it wasn't as so tight. And we're going to continue that now. And hopefully they can grow. And as we get through this, you know, health crisis, we can start getting more people there. So, and we have some other things coming in the works, but I can't talk about those Okay, yet. top so, saver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm a business and I'm getting started in Berkeley, why should I join the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, it's a way to get involved, to meet other business people and help us promote you just as well as, you know, help promote Berkeley. Uh, you know, uh, we do some things again with, and in and, and some cases we do them with the DDA, you know, there's like ladies nights out. It's kind of a DDA thing, but it's promoting Berkeley businesses. Uh, we also do, we're going back to doing them in person. Uh, we do what's called a chamber chat uh, one Friday a month. It's usually, I think, the third Friday of the month. And it's hosted at a business in the morning. And it's just a way to meet the business people. And anybody can come to it. It's not just reserved to chamber members, but residents can also come. And it's just a way to get to know the business people and learn a little bit more about the community. And then we're also getting back to doing, we had been doing them very successfully, uh, a series called the Berkeley U series, where it was like an educational one. And we just did our first in-person two months ago at the end of, in, in April. And we do those in place of the, the chamber chat. And that one was on uh, like uh, cybersecurity and, uh, and identity theft. And, and they're usually sponsored by one of the local businesses. That one was Vibe Credit Union hosted that. So your members can approach the chamber and say, I have a topic I'd like to mm -hmm. educate or like what's yeah. the process? How Absolutely. Do you Absolutely. A few years ago, prior to the pandemic, 
Uh, there was a business that did uh, a, uh, Berkeley U on Instagram. You know, how businesses can promote themselves. I think it was on Instagram and Facebook, which, you know, most businesses do that today. And these are, um, if you're in per are they in person? Are they all on virtual? Or? Well, we've, we've done probably both. Both, yeah. and, and we've done hybrid, but we're trying to get back to in person as much as possible now. Is there, if they, people were go, if they would go to berkeleychamber.com or dot yep. org? Dot com. Dot com. Yep. Would they see a schedule of all these events? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then we do, you know, we do like uh, a postcard three times a year. It's a like a sheet of paper, but it's it's a big, nice big postcard. The business is going to advertise on that. I have been a regular advertiser on that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it just... It's it's just helping businesses be successful and uh, growing growing in Berkeley, you know. And we're 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 we've got a bunch of new businesses that are starting to open in, in the city, and some have moved from other communities to Berkeley. So, which is great to see. So uh, you said you have advertised in these mm -hmm. promotional uh, items from the chamber. Right now, you're doing real estate. Correct. But you initially began in, it was IT, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I started my life as an architect. Started as an architect. Okay. <laughs> so and then transitioned to IT, working with architects. And uh, back in the late 80s, I started like a consulting business to help architects and engineers and builders and stuff to get up to speed on computers. And then ultimately went to work for a large architecture firm, you know, and then transitioned just to regular IT. And about four and a half years ago, I decided I wanted to try my hand at real estate. I was getting burned out on IT. You know, it can be long hours. And as I progressed in my career of IT, I started moving away with working, moving away from working with people. And I've always felt I was a people person and I liked talking and working with people and helping people. And in my early days of IT, that's what I was. I was like the go-to person to help with problems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I missed my architecture life and I thought, well, maybe this is a way to get back and help people buy, sell their homes. And if they're buying a home, if they want to do some renovations or remodels, I can give them some ideas and advice on, on what they can do to the home to, you know, make it more their own. Uh, have you encountered that in Berkeley since, uh, I would imagine most of the things in Berkeley are the, the plots are sort of built out, but they're being maybe remodeled or renovated? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, that was, you know, that was some of uh, my desire to do this is to help people stay in Berkeley. That's something that, you know, I've done. I've been in my house now over 25 years. It's the second home I've owned in Berkeley, which a lot of people in Berkeley do. They'll start with a starter home, which is what I did, and move to a bigger home. And I, and I have some plans to do some renovations to my house in the next year or two. COVID has kind of delayed that two or three years. So, but ultimately, Maybe next year or the year after, I'm going to do these renovations, and and because I love Berkeley, I don't want to leave Berkeley. COVID aside, what are some of the challenges that homeowners or business owners face when they want to maybe remodel or redevelop an existing structure in Berkeley? Well, you know, one is, you know, like you mentioned, the the the. the uh, your lot in Berkeley is pretty small for the most part. There's some areas where there's bigger lots. So getting that to fit on that lot. Uh, and uh, so that's that's one of the bigger challenges. And, and is it affordable? You know, does it make sense financially to do it? And, and that's why I made this, my decision that I'm going to go ahead and move forward with it because I think it does you and know, for me. I'm guessing that there are more creative solutions that have to be found rather than we only have so much space, so right. we can, or have anything, has anything stood out? Is there a, maybe an approach that Berkeley, maybe through the Planning Commission, has put on overall to, to address that? Well, Planning Commission, has, had, through the years, has done some things. And uh, back during, actually during the recession years that we were going through, we spent, because we didn't have a lot of new things to look at, uh, we did do some work on studying the housing stock in the city 
and made some changes to the, 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 the ordinances to allow more of people to be able to add on to their houses and, and do some improvements and, and things like that. So it's, uh, you know, so I think, you know, from those that time that at the planning commission tried to make it, and, it, and I think it has worked. It's helped people stay in their homes and stay in Berkeley. Is there sort of a look or a character of the, the physical built landscape that all of these entities are trying to maintain or project or? You know, I mean, styles change. You know, it's like I can walk in a house or just look at pictures of a house and say, oh, this was renovated in the 90s or, you know, whereas the looks have changed now, you know, and, and it's interesting working with, with you know, uh, first time home buyers now you know, like when I, I think back to the 80s when I bought my first house, I wanted something that I could afford, but I could also do some improvements to to grow equity in that house or help grow more equity. Whereas now, I think a lot of the home first time home buyers, they just they don't want to have to do any work. They just want to walk in the door and have it done. But it's not all of them, but there, it is a lot of them. They want basically what we call it is turnkey. Okay. So, yeah. And is that... Uh plentiful in Berkeley? Or? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, in some cases, yeah. But, you know, I mean, it, it's like in any other community. It's, it's, you'll find some and you'll, others you won't. That'll have to be, you know, like uh, in the industry, we kind of call it as like a, a grandma house, which is a really well-maintained, clean house, but nothing's been updated in the last 20, 30, or even 40 years. And that, to me, is a desirable house because then you can pick what you want to do to it and make it your own so so after it uh kind of it sounded like uh, you were getting more you're spending more and more time with servers and databases yeah, than human beings absolutely okay. yeah, that's exactly what i was doing i was on what they called the infrastructure side so i was all servers and yeah and 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 the os okay so after that got uh, a little isolating decided to go mm -hmm. into real estate so what is it like transitioning from IT to real estate you know it was it was it was an interesting transition uh, because it was uh, it was it was a challenge at first it's not as easy as people make it look you know people watch HDTV and I was one of them and thought oh this is a piece of cake anybody could do this but it's you know because you start with the people you know Right. And you hope that they need to buy or sell a house. And then you have to start doing lead generation and start talking to people. And and <clears throat> uh, they call it top of mind. You want to stay top of mind with your friends and family so that they'll use you. And and, and I consider myself a trustworthy person. And, you, and you know, it's, it's real estate is, for most people, the biggest transaction they'll ever make in their life. Right. You know. And, uh, and I've loved every minute of it. You know, it's been challenging at times, but it, I've really loved every minute of it. What was the biggest challenge and how did you overcome it or how do you cope with it? Uh, not having a regular paycheck has been the biggest change yeah, in my sure, life. Yeah. yeah, and I finally figured it out. And, you know, so I went, you know, because I'm a 100% commission person. So, uh you know, when I get that commission check now, I divide it up and put part of it away for Uncle Sam, part of it to reinvest in my business, and then part of it for myself. But then I set myself a budget for what I can spend each month and mm -hmm. keep that and move along. But it was it was a that's, that was a tough transition. Was um, are you primarily focused on residential, or do you do commercial? Or I am primarily next? residential. Okay. Uh, we do have the ability to do commercial. So, as a licensed real estate agent in the state of Michigan, I can sell anything in the state of Michigan other than mobile homes. Okay. So I can sell houses. I can sell commercial property, land. You know, uh, multifamily, everything like that. But I can't sell mobile homes and what's your relationship with kw metro so keller williams so i'm a licensed real estate agent right or salesperson i think they might call it i'm not a licensed broker okay. and every licensed real estate agent has to work under a broker so 
Keller Williams is the brokerage I affiliated myself with. And I chose them for multiple reasons. One of the big ones is uh, I liked the location in Royal Oak. Uh, and then I liked, the uh, from my research, they are known for doing a very good job at preparing people to be a real estate agent. Because when, when you get your real estate license, you know, you take a class, it's a 40 hours worth of instruction, and then you have to take a state exam. But that is teaching you the law of real estate, but not how to do the paperwork, how to, you know, generate Actually business. do the job, yeah. Do the job. So Keller Williams did a great job of doing that. And and I, I anybody getting a real estate license, I would tell them it's a great place to, to get into business. It's a great company to do, work with. And I would imagine most of your business has been directly in Berkeley or the surrounding areas? Berkeley and surrounding areas, but I've done business uh, currently as far west as Brighton, uh, east as Sterling Heights, maybe St. Clair Shores. I've done some business uh, as far north as Auburn Hills so far. So, you know, so it, it, kind of in the area. Actually, I have a client that uh, we made an offer on a, a home up near Alpena last year, but after the inspection, they walked away from it. It was needed too much work. So so why should people come see Tim Murrid for real estate? Uh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I, I think I'm a, a trustworthy uh, and uh, I know the market. I understand the market, which is pretty crazy right now. Uh, and uh, let's see. I, I'm trying. Like, like I, I had a client I worked with last last fall, and they told me after working with them that they felt like I was the only client they had, yet I was juggling about four or five clients. So. So I'm good at communicating and staying in touch with my clients and, and making sure that uh, they're kept up to speed on everything that's going on. Where could people go to find out more information about your realty? So you can go, I have a website, uh, www.timurad.com. So that's a, a good place to go. Uh, you can also call me, 248-410-6283. And my email is tim at timurad.com. So. And for the chamber, for more information, if people want to join the chamber, where can they go? Berkeleychamber.com. Very good. Is there anything else you'd like to say to prospective businesses or homeowners or anyone interested in Berkeley or the Berkeley area? Uh, it's I, I always consider it a little hidden gem or... Uh, Pretty much the whole time I've lived in Berkeley, I've kind of told people it's got a small town feel in the, in the big metropolitan area. Everybody, you, the longer you live in Berkeley, the more people you know. And, and it's amazed me how many generations I've known, like their parents and their children, and now even their grandchildren are in, in Berkeley schools. So, and, and that that's another thing that's making Berkeley very attractive for home buyers is the school system. It's an incredible school system. Very good, Tim. You've kind of got like geography and people and uh, information, uh, architecture all kind yeah. of combined into one. Yeah. The infrastructure so, and foundation. So I think Berkeley. as a real estate agent, I think I offer a unique uh, uh, mix of, of, of knowledge. Yeah, how everything sort of fits together, comes right. together. Right, yep. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. Well, thank you for joining me today here at Berkeley yeah, Local. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. And we look forward to the rest of the Berkeley Chamber events. Yeah, throughout the rest lots of the coming year. up. So. Very good. Thank All you. Right. See you next time on Berkeley Local. I'm going to hit stop now. That should put some music.